Y'all, we are kicking it old school in the Bunky kitchen this week. I have been telling Bunky for months that I miss doing like traditional old school what's for dinner videos. And then one of you guys reached out and you were like, hey girl, I missed your what's for dinner videos. And I said, Bunky, that settles it. We're gonna kick it old school. We're gonna do a traditional what's for dinner. So I've got three recipes we're gonna make this week. They're gonna be so good. This first one I have been looking so forward to making. So let's get started. So this is gonna be like a one pot chicken garlic orzo um, dish and fun fact I feel like we have very rarely if ever cooked with orzo so I'm very excited for that and then we usually don't do chicken thighs either we always do like chicken breasts or tenderloins so I'm excited to use both of these I'm gonna go ahead and season my chicken I thought this lemon butter garlic would be good in there so I'm gonna do a little bit of that and then some smoked paprika and then of course salt pepper and garlic so I'll use some of the blend and then we'll season both sides and get it in our pan Also, I should tell y'all, Bunky and I are having dinner today. We have not eaten all day, so we're having a very late lunch, early dinner. It's like almost four o'clock, and all we've had is coffee, water, and peanuts. <laughs> Panthers are playing tonight, Monday Night Football, so we're gonna walk over to the Marsh Walk, watch the Panthers, split an appetizer later. So this is really like our dinner, and we're having like a little snack later. I've got my brazier over here. I'm just gonna make it in this, because um, I think it'll be easy. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil down, and then I'm gonna put these like season side down and I'll season the other side. Just in like the uh, literally minute that that's been in there, that smoked paprika is already just so fragrant. Perfuming, fragrant. Yeah, it smells so good. So we're gonna let these cook on each side for like four to five minutes and then we'll take them out and start assembling the rest of it. Actually, wow. That chicken's cooking. Mm -hmm. We gotta get our garlic oh, yeah, all mixed yeah. up because we're using quite a bit of garlic. The recipe that we're going off of, she used an entire bulb of garlic, like one whole entire thing. Um, I've already used some of these, obviously, as you can see. So I'm just gonna mince up what we have left. If you love garlic, use the whole thing. If you just like it, scale back a little, like whatever your family prefers. Ooh -wee. Now that looks good. Mm. or at least like I would say 98%. We're gonna put them back in there so they'll finish up if they need be. <laughs> but first of all, I can't get over how amazing these look. Mm. Like, we need to cook with chicken thighs more often. Serious, I didn't wanna say, uh, you know, I say this quite a bit, but I do feel like, at least in this household, the chicken thigh, the boneless, skinless chicken thigh is a little bit underutilized. It really is. And see, I love boning skin on Chicken leg quarters. Yeah. That's my fave. Cooked out on the grill outside. Yeah, but these look amazing. Oh. So you see all this like good stuff down in here. We're gonna utilize that as our flavor. So I turned my heat down and then Bunky's gonna add our garlic. And I think I did like six cloves of garlic. So we'll Ooh. add that in. And then also our orzo and kind of like toast all this together. Just kind of like keep stirring that because you don't want your garlic to burn. But you want to kind of toast this up and then we're going to add a little splash of chicken broth and it's going to deglaze the bottom of that pan. So we'll start with just like a little splash to deglaze. Kind of straight. Oh yes, I can add a little more. Oh wow. my gosh, yes. It's going to give this orzo so much flavor. Isn't it great just the little things that it's the little things. impress you? Yes, I love it. And it makes cleanup a lot easier too. So I'm just going to keep scraping kind of as I go and let this get like a little bit toasty and then we'll add in the rest of our chicken broth. Is that not beautiful? Yeah, that gave that so much more color too. Wow. So add in the rest of your chicken broth. Give it one more good stir. Mm -mm -mm. Woo! And then add that chicken and all those juices right back in there. Could I have done that any better? It was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're gonna pop a lid on this and let that orzo finish cooking. 
We had some broccoli in the fridge that we don't want to go bad because we are going out of town this week. We are. We're going camping. Actually, we're going home first. Yeah. See our friends and family, they're going camping. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to like our broccoli to go bad. So we're like, why don't we just throw it in there? So we're going to let it cook. Hopefully it will get soft enough. I think it will. Oh yeah. So we'll add it in here and let it kind of. It's going to steam. Know, yeah. Crisp. For probably like the next 10 minutes or so. Become friends with everybody that's already in there. Y'all, I am drooling. This looks so good. Our orzo is finished cooking. Everything is good to go. But I'm not done yet because we are going to add freshly grated Parmesan to the top of this. Y'all didn't think I was going to make something and not add cheese, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's just going to give it like a little bit of nuttiness. Oh my gosh. I'm literally drooling. Does that not look amazing? Looks so good. Oh my word. That's good. <laughs> You've already had a sampling, huh? I had to take a bite. The chicken is cooked so perfectly and that broccoli got so tender. Mmm. Delicious. That is good. Now, I will say my only critique to this is I need a little sprinkle of salt. I feel like it actually could use a little bit more salt. Yeah, because I just only salt I put in there was from the blend, and I feel like that's mm -hmm. a lot of garlic and pepper. Yeah. Um, One tiny sprinkle of salt, and this would be, like, magical. Man, though, the chicken thigh is really good. Yeah. I'm just giving the chicken breast to run for its money right now. I think it is, and funky. I love orzo. I'm telling you. I mean, funky. Why wouldn't you love orzo? As I said earlier, it is the rice of pasta. And I love pasta and I love rice. You love rasta. Okay, this one is going on repeat for me because I put that little pinch of, um, I thought said sugar. I put a little pinch of salt on there and it was like exactly what this needed. I will say with this recipe, it's all about like building that flavor. So season your chicken really well um, and then it's gonna take all that garlic to like really infuse some flavor in there. So use a lot of garlic. Um, the Parmesan on top was just like chef's kiss, but this was so simple and the orzo, I'm obsessed with the orzo. <laughs> I feel like this was for dinner is gonna be really fun because every dinner we've had this week is gonna be like in a different place. Mm. But right now we're home and I remember a couple of videos, this is a while back, mom made her meatloaf, but she was actually just telling me, this is my mama's meatloaf. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't know mine. that. Yeah, and so she used to call my mom and get their recipe. We're gonna make it tonight because this is one of Bunky's very favorite things that mom makes. That's right. And yeah. He never gets it at home because I don't really eat meatloaf. Right. So we're gonna have it tonight for dinner and mom's gonna show us her recipe and actually like walk us through it and give us like step by step. Okay, so you do like two pounds of ground beef? Yes. Okay. Yep. Another reason that we never make this at home is because I don't have a loaf pan. Well, I didn't make it in a loaf pan the last oh, time. Oh really, what'd I you make it, it in? like in a um, eight by eight or nine by 14. Depends on how many people you're feeding. Interesting. Okay, I've been thinking, you know, I couldn't make it because I didn't have a loaf pan. <laughs> It all tastes the same. It That's don't matter what shape you make it. <laughs> Side note, mom and dad planted some pumpkins back this summer. <laughs> For the fall. And dad went out there to get the only pumpkin that they... The only pumpkin. ...grew. And this is it. <laughs> but it is so cute, though. We'll try again next year. Try again next year. <laughs> so you've got um, your ground beef and two eggs. We want to use a little bit of pepper. That good powdery stuff. Yeah, yeah. a little powdery powder. pepper. And salt. Eyeball it. <laughs> yeah, I'm an eyeballer, as, sorry. This is where I learned it from. Yes. As you say, Bob, <laughs> measure with your heart. Exactly. <laughs> well, you put mustard and ketchup <laughs> in um, the meatloaf as well, and the ketchup is also the topping. So I always say three good squirts. Oh, okay. One, two, Wow. Love Three it. good squirts. Love it. But you put a little bit more ketchup than you do mustard. So I don't know what you'd call that, but a, probably let's, a let's cup. Let's say like a cup. You, you know, let probably me, a cup. This is so delicious, but if it's this simple, it might take a little bit of magic away. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 
thought there was so much more work that went into it. You know that. what you love, B? Simple. Simple. No, you love the topping. I do. And that's yeah. what gives it all the extra uh, flavor. Yeah. Great. Well, and then you add about a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm going to start out with half a cup. Half a cup, okay. We'll add to it once we mix it up. And okay. See, how, it. see how the texture yeah. is. We switch rolls here. I'm in charge of mixing. Okay. So we're going to put all the onion in. Which is why I don't eat meatloaf. Well, and we're not putting quite all of it in. Apparently, that was uh, a larger, on, on the larger side of onion. So uh -huh. we're going with, it's about one cup. Okay. Miss Vicky said. And then I guess we just get in here and blend. Wow. Woo. This is, uh, <laughs> the reward is worth it, though. Yes. So how when you're a kid and you go to, like, the church Halloween. Yeah. And then you stick your hand through the the sheet or whatever and uh -huh. you don't know what's on the other side. Yeah. That's kind of the same concept. That's, what, that's <laughs> how I'm feeling right now. We decided last minute to add a little bit of garlic powder to this. Give it just a little bit more flavor. And, and mom is saying we want a little bit of oregano too. So here we are. Yeah. I feel like we need a little mom, green herb. Mom, I just love this. I feel like the everyone is getting to see how and why I cook the way I do. <laughs> I usually buy the breadcrumbs that are the Italian yes. style breadcrumbs. And these are the plain. So we just spice it up. There you go. <laughs> now listen to these two go back and forth. It's honestly the most fun of this whole thing. Yeah. Because they're hilarious. Because mom's like me and Bunky's like Bunky. <laughs> and mom wants Bunky to get in there and work it with one hand. With one hand. hand. <laughs> but we did add in the, like a little bit more of the breadcrumbs. So almost the whole cup is in there. So now we take this. Wow, look at that. It came out mm -hmm. like one. Wow. So see it's got good consistency. Okay. One. Just throw it in. Yep. Do we need to grease it or anything? No. Okay. If there's enough grease in that meat, we're going to have to drain it off. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we just kind of press it ed to the edges over yes. here. Okay, now this is going to go into the oven for about 30 minutes, and we're going to make the secret sauce that goes on top. And we'll put it on there after the 30 minutes, pop it back in, let it finish cooking, right? Right. Okay, so the glaze. The glaze. Consist of Dance. about a cup of brown sugar. Because mom said that this is a sweet and sour meatloaf, right? Yes. And this used to be like my papa's favorite recipe, and he'd always make mom, ask my mom all to cook it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was one of his favorites. Yes, okay. So the sweet is from the brown sugar, and the sour is from the vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. That tang. Or white vinegar, you know. Whatever you what have. On hand. Yeah. <laughs> I think apple cider vinegar will bring a little extra punch. Me too. To I like the apple cider. Plus my gallon jug of white vinegar would not have looked nice on camera. <laughs> <laughs> we, we shop in bulk around here. Okay? Yeah. As you know, my Sam's Club haul lately. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to put in probably a cup of ketchup as well. So. Okay. Really, you know, it's got about two cups of ketchup in it from the one inside the meat and then one on top. Mom, I think you could have your own cooking this show. I mean, you're just going so good. <laughs> no recipes. I can't follow recipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me get, let me do, let me get that for you. Where is it? Well, the mustard. No mustard in there? You could add mustard in there if you want to. And that, I might have to come along. Could you, Maybe little, it goes on top. could you put a little hot sauce in here if you want to? Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever you like. So it's just brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, and ketchup. Yes, for okay. the topping. And I, I put the mustard inside oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the meat mixture. Okay. This is one of those weirdly shaped tomatoes yes. you gotta cut a certain way. See what I mean? That really is. <laughs> it's like two tomatoes grown into one. It's looking good. Mmm. You ain't kidding. I wish I loved meatloaf because that looks really good. I'm loving the uh, the crack in the formation we got going on there. That means all of the top sauce is gonna like seep down in there. Mm. Oh, and then you see how it's drawn away from the edges just slightly? Yes. That's a good meatloaf, Mama. 
You don't really smart. even have to do this. I much, can, uh, but that's so smart, Mom. Back in the oven for how long, Mom? Um, about 15 minutes. That I wait for the top to get like, you can actually stick it under the broiler. If like you a little caramelized? To. Yeah. That topping smells amazing. It's good. It's good. Unless you like pink lotion. I know. <laughs> is once again exceptional um i don't know if i had anything to do with it <laughs> i think it's more so the uh the originator of the recipe that really puts the magic into the meatloaf did it live up to like what you were missing it's exceeding expectations wow. once again once again wow. especially with the cornbread going with it and these tomatoes and cucumber that is a fresh good, from the garden that's a good looking plate right there it's a good fresh cucumbers fresh tomatoes i'm gonna make a happy plate potatoes homemade cornbread mm. mom you outdid yourself gotta keep you coming home <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, hopefully my camera is going to sit still. I have y'all like sat on top of a coffee maker. Bunky just ran to Walmart and my tripod is in the truck. So I have it like completely rigged up here. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on our dinner. And by the way, we are in the camper. I told y'all every dinner this week we are going to be somewhere different. Um, right now we are camping in a town called Ella J, Georgia. And we're at an RV resort called Tolona Ridge. It is so beautiful i will have to insert some footage so you guys can see but we have like 360 views of the mountains and the weather has just been amazing the sunsets are so beautiful so if you don't follow our other channel chasing sunsets i'll link it below but we share all of our like rv adventures over there but anyway we're gonna make a salsa verde pepper jack chicken tonight it sounds just amazing but i want to make sure that chicken has as much flavor as possible so i'm gonna go ahead and get it in the salsa verde so that it can kind of like marinate all day and then we'll grill it tonight at that pepper jack cheese on top i think we're gonna do like some mexican rice with it it sounds just like so yummy so i've got my chicken breast right here you could also do chicken thighs and because we're gonna grill this on the blackstone i went ahead and kind of like pounded these out because i want them to cook nice and evenly so i want them to be a little bit thinner um if we were just doing it on a regular grill which you totally can or in the oven i would have just like left them be but on the blackstone I want to make sure they can cook evenly so just grab whatever jar of salsa verde that you want we found this one at Trader Joe's I'm gonna add this to my chicken and then the recipe doesn't call for this but I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoning in there you're probably like what the heck do you have the seasoning in a baggie whenever we're in the camper like I keep some seasonings in here but then I'll bring some of our favorites from home so like this is the Kinder's garlic and herb that I love this one is ranch seasoning you know just to have on hand because we're gonna be cooking in here but this is the um meat church holy voodoo and it's like a little bit spicy it just has some good flavor in there so i'm gonna add a little bit of that but if you want to just do the salsa verde by all means Well, I'd say we got a good three to four hours in marinade. Kind of change of plans, not really. We're just gonna have an early dinner because, because. apparently they're having like live music tonight. Mm -hmm. They're having um, like a cute little food truck. So we might get like, a little snack later. There's like fire pits out there. So we're gonna kind of just eat early so we can go enjoy all that. We're gonna take in the evening over with the amenities <laughs> of the campground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So professional bunky. Yeah, we haven't we haven't really been here at nighttime quite yet. Like I know. Full blown whole evening. Yeah, so I'm, really I'm excited. Looking forward to it. Me too. Um. Okay, you got the black sun on. Oh yeah. Oh we yeah. Are, it's we hot. are up to temp. Cleaned off. So B's gonna put down a little bit of olive oil, and then he'll get our chicken down. Um, but like I was saying, you could do this on a regular grill. It doesn't have to be a black stone. That's just what we got while camping. So that's what we're gonna use. We actually have the red grill. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's seems like, like a, a lot more work. Grill. Yeah, <laughs> this will be quick. And I, and I feel like, too, you know, when you go certain places, like this is how they cook. Um, 
I'd rather almost have the grilled chicken, plus I feel like it's going to melt that cheese better. Yeah, places known as Chipotle, right? They yeah. use this type of grill, <laughs> yeah. so... You know, I have had quite a few people lately ask me if you will do like a Blackstone grill, demo, demo how you clean it, all this stuff. Yeah. You should do well, that I'd, sometime. I'd be happy to. If y'all want to see that, let us know. That was like immediate smell good in my nostrils. Also, a uh, trick with the Blackstone, once you lay your, well this is a trick with any grill really, but you don't want to really move anything until it's releasing itself. Oh, good idea. Yeah, good you know, tip. Like on a regular grill, you, you put it on a regular gas propane grill. If that meat's not releasing itself from the grates, it's not ready to be flipped yet. Bunky. Grilling with Bunky. We, we needed a whole entire segment. Just grilling with Bunky. Grilling and chilling. <laughs> give us the tips and tricks. You want me to dump some of this? Yeah, on give top us some more juice. If, if we can maybe keep it on top there. Oh my gosh, yes. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on our rice and we're just gonna use this like box cheesy Mexican rice. That sounds good. All we need is some butter, some water, and this box. So super easy, especially in the camper. When cooking on the Blackstone, I do do multiple flips. So I started it on one side, turned it once, then I've turned it again, and now we're gonna turn it the last time for cheesage. Yes, so on top of our chicken, which looks so good, we're gonna add some pepper jack cheese, let that melt on there. Mm. I was thinking you could do like sauteed onions, you could do like tomatoes on here. Wouldn't warm tomatoes be good? Yes. Add a little cilantro on top. Yes. There's lots of different ways that you can like make this chicken. Do we want to go with like a full coverage or a layer? Oh. A layer? You just asked if we want full coverage. Come on now. Well, we want full coverage. Do you have your dome? I do. Let's it's dome it. actually right there. Oh, let's dome it. So. This is how you really get melty cheese. Yeah, I got one more for you. You ready? Yeah. Oh, add a little water. Put that dome around. Ten seconds later, we're gonna have melty cheese. Mm. Oh, are you joking? Bunk. No jokes here. That is amazing. And then I wish I almost had a spatula to get all. The cheese. That extra love underneath. That is gonna be delicious. Look at all that cheese on there. You like how I just did that? With yes. Your get now get that off. Come on now. No, we can't we can't fight for that. <laughs> While we're at it, just real quick. If you have the patience, people, when you're cooking on a blackstone, as soon as you're done. Go ahead and start the cleanup process. This is how Bunky keeps our super clean. Because it makes your life so much easier. While it's warm, add a little bit of water, right? Yeah. And it'll just kind of like scrape right up. And it just goes in that little hole. It's actually very satisfying to watch. <laughs> See, it's Blackstone is still hot, and I've basically cut my after eating time work down like 90%. This chicken, compliments to my bunky. You seriously grill the best like food ever. Oh, thank you. It is grilled to perfection. For real though? Oh, bunky. Oh, good. I just took like three bites of mine. I love this. I love the flavor. The pepper jack gives it just this like kick. Mm -hmm. It's not overwhelmingly spicy, but 
definitely a little bit i would say if you don't like pepper jack or you don't want that heat then do like a um colby jack or monterey jack cheese that would also be really really good throw some like taco style cheese down but the cheese makes it so make sure you do some cheese on top <laughs> <laughs> and i love that little mexican style cheesy rice it's delicious and it's like the easiest thing ever oh it's I so good oh cheese pull mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love it that is just so nice it is so nice and that is like a quick and easy dinner mm -hmm. a little hesitant of like seasoning or, or marinating this with salsa uh-huh but by gosh if it is not just delicious it's so good i'm gonna try a little what, well, wow. i think this will kind of give it a little extra brightness i would say you've got lots of practice on that black stone as much as we go camping as much food as you make me on it mm. with the lime, the lime definitely do the lime i would it, i just thought of it like last minute i was like that would just give a little bit of like zip brightness freshness exactly it gives it some contrast yeah and it brings a little like offsetting like sweetie citrusness yeah to man i like this a lot it's delicious okay easy recipe y'all have to try this wow. one well i gotta tell you guys i loved throwing it back old school and doing a what's for dinner if y'all enjoyed it too let me know if you want to see more of them down below in the comments i'll have all of these recipes in the description box as always we'd love for you to join our family so before you leave hit that subscribe button give this one a thumbs up i love you so very much and i will see you in the next one bye y'all <laughs>